Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Talking Talk. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Land Cruiser Prado. Now we're in the GX trim now, which is the entry level model, and we've got the automatic. So it starts with the GX, and then it goes to the GXL, VX, and the Kakadu. So the GX starts at around 56 grand for the auto, which is pretty affordable for what you're getting. So we're just gonna take a quick look at the inside before we take it for a spin and see how it drives. So you start with the eight inch touchscreen here. It's a shame that it still doesn't have CarPlay and Android Auto, which Toyota is finally getting around to. But in the meantime, we're stuck with this resistive touchscreen that doesn't really have many features. It'll connect to your smartphone and do Bluetooth and all that, but CarPlay is a must. Now the speakers are pretty good, but the higher end models, the VX and the Kakadu, they come with the 14 speaker JBL system. So this one is still all right, but it could make use of an input from JBL, which would even a six or eight speaker from them would make things pretty good. The bass is pretty muffled and the trebles are okay, but it still could be improved. Now you've got this fabric seat in here, which is really comfy and there's a decent amount of space and they feel good, but obviously leather accented or full leather would be better. But again, we're in an entry level model. There obviously isn't any seat heating or anything like that. There isn't the triple climate control, which you'll get in the higher end models. But again, because we're in the entry level, we're just gonna make do with what we've got and it's just simple. That's what you get with this car. If you don't we need to worry about all those features, those heated seats, triple climate control, this is the perfect car because it still has that same structure, the same engine, the same shell, and the same space that you would get in the other models. The spacing is amazing. You've got easily five people that could sit in here with no problems at all, even on a long trip, because even the three seats at the back, they have plenty of space and leg room compared to the seats at the front as well. You would be surprised how much space they have at the back. You could comfortably sit there for a long trip so you won't be fighting to get the front seat. Now you've got a decent amount of storage here. You've got the first option, which is to open to put your wallet and phone. And then you go one more, and then you've got an even more space here, which you could fit so much in here. You've got a little storage unit here, which is probably for your keys. It's sort of an odd L shape. And you've got your 12 volt connector, a USB and aux port. You've got two bottle holders here and another storage compartment in here, which I would use to put my wallet. That's what I've been using it for. Now you've got a, another 12 volt connector at the back. It would have been better to have at least two USB ports for you know, the kids or anyone else at the back. But something good is in the very back in the boot, you've got an actual input for a plug, a power socket that you can plug into, which I was actually really excited to see, 110 watts, which is pretty decent to have in the back of the car. If you want a laptop to charge or anything more that needs requires more power, it's perfect there. So the ins inside is quite nice for what you're getting. It's quite comfortable and it's just modest. I think that's what you're getting with this sort of car as the entry level, the GX is you still get the Prado and all that it comes with. It just doesn't have the bells and whistles that the others would have. You've got 640 liters of boot space at the back. Now this is the five seater, so you do have a lot more boot space, but you can get the seven seater as an option, as well as with the more expensive trims will come with seven seats. Now it's got the safety sense and all of these features, but we'll go through that once we take it for a drive. But for now, let's take it for a spin. All right, so we're gonna take this beast for a spin now and just see how it goes on the road, discuss all the technical elements about it and just see what we think. So you've got the 2.8 litre turbo diesel engine, which is pretty good because of the efficiency that you get with the diesel, but also the torque. You've got 130 kilowatts of power and 420 newton meters worth of torque. The issue for me is that given its size, the torque is great, 420 newton meters, that's enough pulling power. And a little bit more power would have been ideal. You do lack a little bit of low end power when you are giving it a bit of a rev or when you do want to overtake someone. But that's just me, I like power. I'm not gonna complain with this because I know the people that are buying it purely want the torque and the efficiency as well and just to be able to pull things that are towed on the back. With the towing, you'll get three tons of towing capacity on the auto. The automatic does get a bit more towing capacity. It's two and a half tons for the manual, three tons for the automatic. So 3,000 kilograms, which is pretty good. That's a decent amount of pulling and you could basically pull most things that you're gonna get for this sort of car. And the trade-off is because of the turbo diesel, it doesn't have the big V8 that the Sahara will have, for example, you have the efficiency. So Toyota claims the combined consumption to be eight liters per hundred. I've found that to be quite different as we do with almost every car that we test. You're looking at around 11 to 12 liters per hundred if you're in the city, if you're just doing urban driving, 
If you're on the motorway, you could easily bring it down to seven to eight liters per hundred on pure motorway driving. And because you do have a 150 liter tank, you could easily go a thousand plus kilometers on a single tank. You've got the 87 litre main tank and the 63 litre reserve tank, which is a monster. It's great for this sort of thing. If you are going on an adventure or a long journey, you just fill up the tanks, they fill up automatically and you have 150 litres to play with. Now this is, comes in at 2.2 tonnes of the GX, the entry level that we got. And then the Kakadu goes up to 2,450 kilos, which is almost two and a half tons, 300 kilos more. So it's a big difference in weight, given all the extra features and all the extra specs that that model has. So you've got the Toyota Safety Sense here, which does active cruise control. It keeps you in your lane. Um, it also slows down and speeds up according to the car in front and the forward collision assist. So it'll break if it senses that you're too close to the car in front. It is a good system, although it does lack the blind spot monitor in the GX and the sensors that the higher end models get. So this car actually doesn't have any sensors at the front or the back. So it does make things difficult when you're parking. You do have the camera, but it would have been good to have the sensors and the 360 degree camera that the higher end models have, uh, which are better for terrain, like a panoramic monitor, better for when you're four wheel driving and off-roading, you could make use of that sort of thing, as well as the blind spot monitor and the rear crossing detection, which the other models have. Now, you do get a decent amount of low end torque because you are in a diesel and you've got 420 newton meters and it does make overtaking all right. It's got enough kick there for a car that's this big and this heavy and pulling things is no problem at all. If you've got even up to three tons, you might have to rev it a bit more, but it just does it with no problems whatsoever. Now, in terms of the off-roading, this is the entry level, but it still does an incredible job at off-roading. And that's the reason you'd be getting this sort of car is because it's effortless. There's no issue at all. You can just go off-roading and then the next day take the kids to school in it and that's what's good about it. It does have the downhill assist control, not available in the manual, but most people I presume are buying the auto nowadays, and the hill start assist control, which comes in the automatic as well. Uh, now, some of the things that the manual gets, sorry, not the manual, that the higher end models get, oh, is um, there's no rear diff lock switch on the GX or adaptive variable suspension or the multi-terrain system and this kinetic dynamic suspension system that's on the Kakadu only. Now that's really high end and just makes four wheel driving even more effortless. It's not really that necessary but if you are really serious about it the Kakadu which is the top of the line has even more features. Whereas this one it still has the downhill assist control and the hill start but you have to make sure that you get the automatic to get those features. Now it drives super well given that it's a Prado. It does have a bit of body roll given its size. You'll obviously come to expect that with this sort of SUV. You're gonna feel it you know, shifting to the side. If you're going around tight bends, just take it easy. It might feel like it's tipping a bit, but this is a monster of a car and you have to expect that. It's comfortable on the right on the inside because you've got those thick 55 profile tires, this car could just go over anything. I mean, it feels comfortable four-wheel driving, let alone just driving every day. It's just smooth and effortless. And the diesel, the transmission is really good as well. Even in the automatic, it's sort of effortless in changing gears and smooth. That's what I like about it. It is one of the louder diesels that I've driven, but it's a Prado. And I guess that's the trade-off. You've got torque, reliability, and efficiency which you get with a diesel that you wouldn't get with one of the V6 or V8 SUVs. That might sound better and be more exciting given that they're petrols, but this still does the job really well. This is a Prado, so we're talking a car that'll go for hundreds of thousands of kilometers and never have an issue at all. And that's the reason you get one of these things because it's reliable, it's indestructible, and it does everything you need it to. If you wanna go off-roading, go for it. If you wanna take the kids to school the next day, easy as that. If you just want to be your daily commuter, it does it well as at that too. And it is big, uh, such a big car. It's something that you got to get used to. If you're not coming from a hatchback or a sedan, just understand that there is a lot of car here. It's quite long, it's wide, it's 2.2 2 plus tons, sometimes up to 2.5 if you get the higher end model. So you got to come to expect that with this sort of car, but I guess that's what you're buying it for. You can do so much with it, 
there's so many features and so many options and even at the entry level with the GX, it still feels great. If you do want more features though, definitely move up at least to the GXL, which gets a lot more. But if you want all the bells and whistles, the Kakadu just has absolutely everything. And it's a luxurious cruiser, a luxurious SUV, but then come to four wheel driving time, that Kakadu will just go anywhere. Same with this too, we've taken it off road and it doesn't bat an eye at all. Make sure you've got your tire pressures right, depending on where you're going off roading, but it honestly just does everything with ease and it pulls really well. That's where your torque comes in, three ton towing capacity. Make sure you've got the tow bar connected properly and then you're good to go. But there it is, this car is basically will do it all and that's the thing I love about it and I love about Prados. <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen people with Prados that have almost half a million kilometers and they're still going no issues at all. And that's the thing I love about these cars. They'll just get the job done. A few technological advancements that could be improved inside, potentially a bit more power just to make us a bit happier, but it still gets the job done. That's what we love about it. And that's the Prado. So there it is. There's our review. Stay tuned for the full write-up. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.